اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائما متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد our praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he seek his forgiveness his guidance and his assistance and we take refuge with him from the evil in our souls and from the consequence of our misdeeds whoever Allah gives guidance to none can mislead and whoever misleads none can guide I testify there is nothing and no one worthy of worship besides Allah alone he has no partners and I testify that Muhammad the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger we ask Allah to grant him peace and extend to him our salutations on this blessed day and it says he ask him to grant peace to his family members, companions, and everyone who follows goodness and shows good will into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the previous khutbah, I spoke about the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is quoted to have saying, لا يزال قلب كبير شابا in Fitnatain, or La Yazar al Qalb al Kabiri Shaban Fitnatain. The heart of the older person remains young with respect to two things. Qabd al Dunya wa Tul al Amal. The love of the dunya and the prolongation of hope. <coughs> we have spoke a bit about what the dunya is and what is meant by the love of the dunya in that khutbah. So during this short talk, I'd like to speak a bit more about the second aspect of this hadith, which is what is called tool al-amal, tool al-amal, the prolongation or elongation of hope. Now, the elongation or prolongation of hope fundamentally is a reference to the human being's desire to live for a very long time. And that desire, which also includes the desire to remain healthy, or the assumption that one will remain healthy, leads one to procrastinate. Procrastination which can, pertains specifically to one's worship. We've seen it quite often, of course, and especially in Muslim lands where people, they don't go to perform hajj until they get older. It's obvious, this is for older people. You get old, then we go perform the hajj. At least that's what it was, it was the case when I was younger, coming up. Is that the attitude that Muslims had is that, okay, well, when you get older, you're going to perform the hajj. Right now, you do what you do. You get serious later in life. But the reality is that as a human being gets older, similar to I guess we say a tree. A tree gets old and eventually becomes weaker. It doesn't become stronger. Of course, we see life and death even in, of course, nature. But as we get older, we get become weaker. So, so we say, we say we'll delay until we get older. Those things that we like to do, but ultimately things happen. If you're healthy, then you can become ill. And if you don't become ill, you can. An accident can happen, unfortunately, God forbid, a terrible accident can happen to you. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he advised that there are two blessings that people are duped about, we're deceived about. Many people, they are, they cheat themselves out of those two blessings. Good health and free time. Health and free time. Again, as you, regardless of how old you may be, or how young you may be, that all of us, of course, that we, our hearts remain young with respect to the prolongation of hope. That is to say, the hope that we'll live for a very long time. The hope that we'll remain healthy for a long time. So anything that needs to be taken care of now, we'll do them later. We'll do them later. And I've talked about as well that the, when, with respect to the love of the dunya, because of the love of the dunya, that and the fact that the human being has been given certain a certain nature, that jealousy is a, a, a natural part of our lives and our interactions. Imam al-Mahasidi, his recommendation
reason for repelling or fighting against jealousy is to shorten or reduce our hope. He said, Reduce your hope or restrict your hope through, I mean, or reduce jealousy by restricting your hope, by reducing the thing that you hope for. In other words, take care of business now. If you don't hope to have what others have as much, of course, you can hope them, but it, the idea is that it's about preparation. What do you sacrifice as you prepare to get those other things? Uh, do you prefer the dunya of the akhirah? Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is quoted that saying, and this is also the Sahih of Imam Bukhari. He says, In the ma alikum There are two things, it, or it the, the, that, the, the thing that I fear for you the most are two things. Following your passion or your desire and the prolongation of hope. So as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi talked about love of the world and the prolongation of hope, as Ali and the Father said, I, this is why I fear the most for you as believers, that you follow your hawa, that you follow your desire, your whim. You do, you follow your fancy. Whatever you think is good, you do it. Whatever you feel is good, you do it. And this is condemned absolutely in the Quran and the clearest of terms over and over and over. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He loves from us, brothers and sisters, are acts of faith. He loves from us the rejection of kufr. He loves from us obedience. He loves from us the uh, resistance of our passion to, to not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He loves from us to practice the sunnah of the Messenger and not to innovate. If the Prophet did something and he did it in a certain way, it is not our place nor our right to alter the sunnah of the Messenger So it says, following your fancy and the prolongation of hope. The reason I am fearful of you following your fancy is because it dissuades you from the truth. As they say, love, it deafens and it blinds. And people will hurt me when you sin. That love, it deafens and it blinds. When you love something, that you... But people are addicted to things, of course. They don't want to acknowledge it. They're in denial at first. They know they're being destroyed by their love for something harmful to them, but they are in denial for a very long time. But it's about what it, what it does to you. That it, it will dissuade you from the truth. As for the prolongation of hope, it makes you forget about the hereafter. It makes you forget the hereafter. And as Abdul Wahid al Hashir says, Rasul Khutaya huwa hubbul ajila. They said, Wa illa thirat tiralila. That the, the, the chief of all sins is love of the hereafter. Or love. I mean, love of this world, love of the fleeting life, and the only cure for it is to feel compelled towards your Lord. This is Ali Nadi Tariq still speaking. He said, The hereafter, or yeah, the hereafter, it is moving. Marching in advance. The hereafter meaning is coming. It's coming. We don't know how close death is. That the average lifespan for people in this country between 75 and 80 years old. For men, of course, the lower number. Women, the higher number. And when we think of our own life, we look at our ages and we can think about how much time we might have on this planet. The Akhira is advancing forward, it's coming, it's close. And the dunya is moving in retreat. Means, look at how old you are, 50, 60, whatever it may be. How much is, has already gone past? And for each one of those realms, there are children. Meaning for the dunya and the akhirah. 
that each realm has its children. So be among the children of the hereafter and do not be among the people of the children of the dunya. Because today there is work and there is no reckoning. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets you get away with all that you do. Meaning that he, he, he reckons and he counts your deeds, he records your deeds, but he doesn't punish you right away. But tomorrow there's reckoning, but there will be no work. You won't have the opportunity to make up for what you lose in this world. So Mahmoud Hasibi, again, he talks about fighting jealousy to reducing our sense of hope or the things that we hope for. But he also says, and seek assistance in order to reduce the things you hope for by constantly remembering of, remembering death. By constant remembrance of death. One thing leads to another. And I'll conclude this with one of the prayers that is attributed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's from a hadith which scholars read as weak. However, the du'as, the, the prayers themselves are, we can, we can embrace them. And just we are careful about weak hadith and we don't say that Rasulullah Sallallahu said them, but some wise person did say this 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 prayer. And then according to this hadith, it says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min dunya tamna'u khayr al-akhirah. Oh Allah, I take refuge with you from a worldly matter that prevents the goodness of the hereafter. And I take refuge with you from a life that prevents the goodness of death. And I take refuge with you from a hope that prevents the goodness of work. Because that's what happens when we are constantly delaying and procrastinating. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll, I'll straighten up later. I'll become a pious person in the future, then fundamentally we are delaying the good that will be recorded on my on our behalf. And it is the only type of funds that we will have with us to take with us as we leave this world. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He place our hearts and make our hearts attached to those things that are most useful and beneficial and most important to, to us in this life and the hereafter, inshaAllah. وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات. الحمد لله، الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم مسلما اللهم عز الإسلام مسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام مسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام مسلمين اللهم ردنا إلى دينا ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى دينا ردا جميلا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والحسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات واغفرنا اللهم معهم يفضل بإحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم إنا نعوذك من دنيا تمنع خير الآخرة اللهم إنا نعوذك من حياة تمنع خير الممات اللهم إنا نعوذك من هبل يمنع خير العمل ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم اللهم اغفر لنا من خشيتك ما تهول به بيننا وبين معاصيك 
ومن طاعتك ومن طاعتك لا تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون به علينا مصيبات الدنيا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين